All right, so um, today we're going to be talking about Sjogren's Syndrome. And, uh, you know, I have to admit, before we got started even, I wasn't totally sure uh, what it was all about. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe some of our listeners are in the same boat. Yeah, I think that's probably true. It's definitely a condition that deserves more attention. Absolutely. So to get us started, can you just kind of give like a basic overview, you know, like what is Sjogren's Syndrome? Yeah, so imagine like your immune system. Right, the one that's supposed to be protecting you. Yeah. And then it suddenly like gets confused and starts attacking the glands that are supposed to keep like your eyes and mouth moist. Oh wow. That's basically Shogun syndrome in a nutshell. So it's more than just like needing some eye drops or something. Yeah, exactly. It's an autoimmune disease that primarily affects those moisture producing glands. And you were saying that it's a lot more common than people realize? Oh yeah. Way more common. Millions of people worldwide are dealing with this and it mostly affects women. Wow, millions. That's a huge number. And I know we were looking at some stats earlier, and I think in Taiwan alone, there are something like 90,000 people. That's right, 90,000 in Taiwan alone. Wow, that's that's a lot of people dealing with this. And I know you mentioned that the symptoms can be really varied. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the things that people experience? Well, it can range from, you know, just like, mild dryness in the eyes and mouth, you know, kind mm -hmm. of annoying. Right. But for some people, it can get really severe with like intense fatigue, painful joints, even problems with other organs. So like it's a whole spectrum. A whole spectrum. It can be really debilitating for some people. So while we're kind of waiting for, you know, hopefully a cure or something to, to really address the root cause, what can people do to manage the symptoms, especially that dryness? Well, luckily there are some things that can help like artificial tears for the eyes, Okay. sugar-free candy, or gum to stimulate saliva production. Okay. Humidifiers can also help. And just generally staying hydrated. Avoiding things like caffeine and alcohol, which can actually make dryness worse. So, you know, some simple things, but helpful. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So that's some good news. But of course, what we're all really hoping for is, is a cure or at least some kind of treatment that can really address, you know, what's going on. And that's why we're talking today about this potential new treatment called Veldona, right. developed by a company called Inos. Yes, Veldona. It's uh, it's definitely generating a lot of buzz in the community. Okay, so tell me, what is it about this treatment that makes it so special? Well, it all comes down to these things called interferons. Okay. Have you heard of those before? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you can explain. Yeah, so basically they're like these tiny little messengers in your body. Okay. And they can basically tell your immune system, you know, hey, calm down. Right. You're overreacting a little bit. Right. And that's kind of what's happening in Sjogren's, where right, the immune system is attacking its own tissues. Right. So Veldona, what it does is it delivers a low dose of these interferons to try to kind of rebalance the immune system and protect those moisture producing glands. That's really interesting. So is this just like a theory or has it actually been tested? No, no, it's been tested. It's actually gone through three phase three clinical trials already in the U.S. Oh, wow. Phase three. That's that's pretty far along. Yeah. Those are the big leagues. And what did they find? Well, the results were really promising. They found that Veldona significantly increased salivary flow. Oh, wow. Which is a big deal, right? Because that's one of the major symptoms for people with chagrins is dry mouth. So it actually helped them produce more saliva? Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So yeah, there's a lot of excitement around this. So what's the latest with this Veldona? Well, the big news is that they just received IRB approval to start a clinical trial in Taiwan. Okay, can you break that down for us? Like, what does IRB approval mean and why is it important? Yeah, so IRB stands for Institutional Review Board. Okay. It's basically like an independent ethics committee. Okay. They review any research that involves humans to make sure that it's ethical and that the participants are protected. So it's kind of like a safety check. Exactly. So getting IRB approval means that this trial has, you know, passed that ethical check and it can officially move forward. So it's a big green light. Big green light, yeah. That's amazing. And where is this trial going to be taking place in Taiwan? It's going to be at Chuangho Hospital, which is affiliated with Taipei Medical University. Okay, and that's a... Very reputable institution. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds very prestigious. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, the research will be in good hands. Absolutely. So that's very exciting. So we've got a promising treatment, a really great hospital, ethical approval. Everything seems to be coming together. But before we get you know, too far ahead of ourselves. I want to talk a little bit more about this company, iNews. Yeah. What else are they working on? Well, aside from Veldona, they're also doing some really cool stuff with diagnostics. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that they're combining, like, AI-driven testing with 
the therapeutic development. Exactly. So tell me more about that. So they have this platform called AI Nose. AI Nose. It's pretty amazing. It uses artificial intelligence to analyze breath samples. Oh, wow. And it can detect various health conditions just from your breath. So it's like having a super powered sense of smell that can just sniff out diseases. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. It's incredible. And it speaks to their commitment to like a really holistic approach to healthcare. You know, mm. they're not just trying to treat diseases after they develop. Right. They're also looking for ways to diagnose them earlier. Which is huge. Which is huge. Exactly. Especially for something like this, where, you know, if you can catch it early. Right. Maybe you can prevent some of those more serious complications. Absolutely. Early detection is key. Yeah. So that's really fascinating. I love that they're kind of looking at it from all angles. Yeah, they're really innovative. Yeah. But let's come back to this Veldona and what it could mean for people who are actually, you know, living with Seergrens right now. So what can you tell us about this Taiwan trial? Like, what are they going to be looking at specifically? And how does it kind of build on what we've already learned from those earlier U.S. studies? Yeah. So they're going to be enrolling 24 patients with primary Sjogren's syndrome. Okay, so that means it's not like a side effect of another condition. Exactly. It's like the core Sjogren's. So they're really zeroing in on that. Exactly. And one of the main things they'll be measuring is, of course, salivary flow. Okay, so seeing if it can replicate those results from the U.S. trials. Exactly. Can it actually improve saliva production? So really putting it to the test. Putting it to the test. Yeah. And they'll also be looking at a bunch of other factors that are related to Sjogren's, you know, things like dryness and other areas. Okay overall disease activity, and they'll even be using special imaging techniques to actually look at how well the salivary glands are functioning. Wow, so like really comprehensive. Very comprehensive. Yeah, they're really trying to get a full picture of, you know, how Veldon is affecting these patients. Yeah. Yeah, and I imagine there are some challenges in conducting a study like this. I mean, just logistically, you know, tracking all these different factors uh, for all of these patients. One of the big challenges is just finding enough participants you know, that meet the criteria for the study. Right, because it has to be people with primary Sjogren's within a certain age range and all that. Exactly. And then just, you know, keeping track of all that data over time. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of data points. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of moving pieces. But it sounds like the team at Shuang Ho Hospital is up for the challenge. Oh, yeah. I have no doubt they're they're experts in this field. Excellent. So we talked about how this trial is open label, mm. which means that everyone knows who's getting the treatment. Yeah. And I'm just curious, are there any downsides to doing it that way? You know, like, doesn't that introduce potential bias? Yeah, that's a great question. It's true that open label trials do have a higher risk of bias, but sometimes they're the best or only option, you know, particularly <laughs> for rare diseases or when you're studying long term effects. So the researchers will use various statistical techniques to try to minimize that bias and ensure that the results are you know, as reliable as possible. So it's about finding the right approach for the research question. Exactly. Okay, so how long will this treatment period last for those 24 patients? It will vary a little bit depending on how each individual responds to the treatment, but yeah. somewhere between 24 and 48 weeks. Oh, wow. So that's a pretty significant chunk of time. It is. And during that time, they'll be tracking all those primary and secondary endpoints that we were talking about. Absolutely. So remember, the primary endpoint is all about salivary flow and those grinus symptoms. So they'll be measuring things like, you know, how much saliva people are producing, how their eyes and mouth feel. Mm -hmm. And then the secondary endpoints will give us a broader picture of how Veldone is impacting the disease as a whole. Right. So like, is it actually improving their quality of life? Exactly. They'll be looking at dryness in other areas like the skin. Okay. They'll be assessing overall disease activity. And they'll even be using nuclear medicine imaging to actually look at the salivary gland function. So it's like a multi-pronged approach. It is very thorough. Which makes sense because this is a condition that can, you know, really affect people's lives in a big way. Absolutely. So I'm glad to hear that they're being so thorough. And I also noticed, you know, looking at the press release from iNews that they're very transparent about the timeline for the trial. Oh, yeah. Like they've laid out all the different steps, you know, from the IRB approval to the data analysis, and I think that's really important. I think so too. Transparency is crucial in research. Absolutely, it helps build trust. Yeah, exactly, and you know, it allows the scientific community, healthcare providers, the public, to really understand what's going on with the research and to, you know, track its progress.
And speaking of transparency, I noticed that they're also upfront about the fact that they're publicly traded. Oh, yeah? They're listed on NASDAQ. That's right. So for people who are interested, they can actually follow along with the company's progress and see how this research might impact their stock performance. Exactly. Adds a little extra layer of intrigue to the whole thing. It does. It does. So we've talked about Sjogren's Syndrome. We've talked about this promising treatment, Valdona, the upcoming trial in Taiwan, the company behind it all, I knows. What's the big picture here? What does all of this mean for the future of Sjogren's treatment? Well, I think what's really exciting is that we're seeing this convergence of like really innovative research, mm -hmm. cutting edge technology, right. and a real genuine commitment to improving the lives of people with this condition. Right. So this Taiwan trial is a major step forward in our understanding of this really complex disease. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the results could have really far-reaching implications. It sounds like we're on the cusp of a new era in Sjogren's treatment. I think so too. You know, where we move beyond just managing symptoms to actually targeting the root cause. Exactly. And that's incredibly exciting. It is, and it's not just about Veldona. Yeah. You know, all the research that's being done is really paving the way for a whole new generation of treatments and diagnostic tools. So while we wait for the results of this Taiwan trial, what can people do to kind of stay informed and involved in this fight against Sjogren's? That's a great question. Yeah. There are a lot of things people can do. Yeah. You know, they can support organizations that are funding research for Sjogren's. Okay. They can participate in awareness campaigns, connect with other people online, in support communities. Yeah, it's all about spreading awareness. Exactly. The more we know about Sjogren's, the better equipped we are to advocate for ourselves and our loved ones. Absolutely. So knowledge is power, and we need to keep learning. Keep asking questions. Keep the conversation going. I agree. Excellent. Well, this has been a really fascinating discussion. Yeah, it has. I've learned a lot today. Me too. And we're going to keep following this story very closely. So be sure to tune into our next deep dive where we'll continue exploring this and other exciting developments in the field. Looking forward to it. Do you want a deep dive podcast like this? Contact Bull Run by Charlie Devanzo.